Since the dawn of civilization, man has found a need to write things down. For over 5,000 years, people have used a variety of different type styles for different languages to record everyday events from marriages to religious to science, military, and even early trade. By writing it down, thoughts and ideas could be passed down from generation to generation, allowing for the accumulation of knowledge in a civilization. But the art of writing was extremely labor intensive. And of course, making additional copies was as difficult as making the first. Throughout the Middle Ages, thousands of monks spent their lives transcribing religious works such as the Bible. But then in 1440, the German inventor Johannes Gutenberg invented the first printing press, which allowed for the replication of a printed document many times over. Blocks with characters engraved on them could be arranged on a plate and then pressed onto paper multiple times to produce multiple copies. Books became more readily available, allowing knowledge to be shared and accumulated. The next big step came in 1873 when the first typewriter was invented, allowing users to develop an original document. Christopher Scholes, a Chicago inventor, came up with the idea, design, and manufactured the world's first commercial typewriter. Remington manufactured it, and Scholes' daughter became the first typist the world has ever known. Christopher Scholl's invention started a whole new industry of typewriters and changed the way people communicated throughout the business world and other aspects of society. Little did he know that his most long-lived innovation would be the design of the keyboard, the actual layout of the keys that would be used to type on the typewriter. Today we know it as the QWERTY keyboard because of the first six characters in the top left of the keyboard itself. It's also known as the Universal Keyboard. Today, billions of people use the QWERTY keyboard invented by Christopher Scholl. This Scientific American magazine from 1897 gives us a great insight into how the Remington Scholl's typewriter worked and also how it was reviewed in its day. Inside the Scientific American, there's a lengthy article that includes illustrations and details about exactly how it works. Pressing the keys on the first typewriter connected through a connecting rod to produce characters on the paper which is rolled into it. The actual printing was done on the underside of the carriage and in order to see it you'd have to lift the carriage up. The characters are made by type bars which hang on the inside of the machine underneath the carriage. By lifting the carriage out of the way, we can see inside to the type bars. By pressing lightly on the keys, you can see the movement of the type bar inside. There's one type bar for each key on the keyboard, and they're arranged in a circle around the inside of the typewriter. The typewriter works great with nicely printed characters, but it is inconvenient having to lift up the carriage to see what you've typed. The carriage is the mechanism which sits above the type bar and holds the paper, moving it back and forth above the type bars. There was even an option available for a long carriage to handle wider paper. To provide smooth operation to the carriage as it moves back and forth, there are four bearings that are underneath that provide a solid platform and a smooth roll for the carriage. At the back of the typewriter, there's a mechanism which advances the carriage as the keys or spacebar are struck. And finally, there's a ribbon movement, which moves an inked ribbon from left to right, ensuring there's always fresh ink where the type bar strikes the paper. The Scientific American article also points out the materials and finishes that are used in making this typewriter. Bronze and copper make this typewriter not just one of the first, but one of the most unique typewriters ever made. And the magazine highlights the beauty of the design of the Remington Scholl's typewriter.
And the back cover of the Scientific American magazine also includes an advertisement for the Remington Standard typewriter that they've shown within. By the 1890s, however, there were a lot of competitors that Remington Scholes had to deal with. One of my favorites is the Blickensdorfer Typewriter Company of Stamford, Connecticut, which produced this featherweight model weighing in at less than five pounds, probably one-tenth the weight of the Remington Scholes. Instead of using type bars, the Blickensdorfer used a type wheel, which allowed the typeset to be interchangeable and also a lot less complex than the Remington Scholes. But both typewriters made a huge impact to their users around the world. On the 60th anniversary of his invention, Christopher Scholes' daughter, the world's first typist, took another photograph showing her typing abilities. But by then, the typewriter had become commonplace throughout the world. Millions of students learned how to type and went on to be key elements of the business world. Even today, some old guys won't give up the typewriters for anything. But while typewriters might not be commonplace anymore, the keyboard that was invented by Christopher Scholes lives on. It's hard to think about today's digital world without a QWERTY keyboard in front of you. Every second of every day, there are 30 million keystrokes taking place during that second around the world, the vast majority on a QWERTY keyboard. For the last 125 years, the QWERTY keyboard, invented on the world's first typewriter developed by Christopher Scholes, has allowed the world to move into a new society from the industrial age into the computer age.